Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to Hurricane Game Day, brought to you by Williamson Automotive. We are talking basketball on the show, and we tip it off with University of Miami women's coach Katie Meyer as the Hurricanes are in ACC play. Coach, welcome to the show. Thanks. All right, so uh, you're off and running in ACC play, and uh, had three games so far, a couple of tough ones coming up. Let's start with Duke. That was a big win for you right. uh, and uh, a great win at home. It was uh, real toughness. It was we got in a hole early, but we didn't panic. I thought our upperclassmen really came through. I mean, they they were ready for the ACC opener. Um, our, our our freshmen that are playing so much, they just didn't really have an idea of what it takes to win ACC basketball games. And I thought our seniors stepped up and said, "We'll show you." You know, so we subbed out two freshmen and put in two seniors early in the game, and um, it really changed the tone of the game. Our upperclassmen, their physicality and their defensive, their commitment to the little things was huge in that game. Uh, you take great pride in your defense, and Duke uh, can score the ball, but you did a great job of defending them. Yeah, I think they had the second highest scoring backcourt in the nation, mm -hmm. and um, neither one of those kids got their average. And they had to have another young lady get over her average to even stay competitive with us. So our defensive commitment was extraordinary, and it's it, you know that's it. I mean, we're not the team. We're not going to outscore people this year. We just don't have the firepower that we've had in years past, but that's okay because we're a lot more committed to the defensive end and doing the little things, so that's why we got the victory. But what a year to beat uh, Duke, Michigan State, and Kentucky in the same year. I mean, it's just like, really? That's the blue blood of college basketball, and we've, we've been able to accomplish that in, a, in what was supposed to be a rebuilding year, so I'm really proud of that. Yeah, that looks pretty good on a resume. It looks darn good, <laughs> darn good. It sounds great, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, Erica Davenport, we'll, we'll talk about... Uh, your team's play uh, in the other games. But Erica, for the most part, has been really good for you and, and been terrific on the boards. Oh, she, listen, uh, as improved as any, she's already gotten most improved, I think, twice at our banquet. And I, at, right now, I would say from her freshman year to her senior year, she may be one of the most improved players ever in women's college basketball. What she's able to do now, the things I'm trusting her with now, were things I would never have considered her freshman year. Uh, she can make the pass. You know, she can. She's getting assists. She's rebounding. She's offensive rebounding. She's hitting a 10-foot jumper. Um, just really proud of her. And Octavia Blue has done a great job developing her. Is that uh, fun for you, or rewarding? Yeah. I guess is a better word. Rewarding to watch the growth and development of players from their freshman year to their senior year, especially when they really get it. Yeah, it, it's so great. Uh, Jessica Thomas was such a great story. Um, came in, you know, not even in the top 250 on anyone's recruiting rankings and came out, you know, getting a shot at the WNBA. So that was a great journey, and Erica's just been just as, as, as fun. Um, Erica probably didn't even have the – Jessica had more of that. She was all about basketball. Erica, I think, was just a, a nice athletic – player who, who, well, basketball will be my thing because I'm tall and I can move pretty well. And she's turned into a great basketball player, so that's been fun. I think it's one of the great things about you and your staff is your ability to develop players. Well, we better. You know, we're in the nation's best conference, and, um, you know, I remember our highest recruiting class was 10 one year, and we were still like eighth in the ACC. And I thought, gosh, in your life you get the 10th rated recruiting class in the country, and you're not even top five in your conference. But, you know, people can really recruit in our conference, so... The players we get uh, need to get better real quick, and they usually do. Well, you have a lot of courage. You get the Courage Award uh, this season because you went into ACC play, a, a revamped team, and you mm -hmm. went into ACC play playing freshman a lot. Yeah, and, you know, it's, it's necessary. I think um, we've had some injuries, and uh, it wasn't part of the grand plan. I knew that we were going to have to play a lot of freshmen a lot of minutes. I just didn't think they'd have to be the point guard and have so much on their plate, and with Laura being out, and this would have been such a great season for our freshmen if they had Laura there with them, just helping them, just taking some of the pressure off, but she's not there. So they're struggling a little bit, but they're having phenomenal seasons. I mean, the alternative is to be sitting on someone's bench, and I think they prefer playing. You have some big games coming up against Florida State and Clemson. We'll talk about those games and others when we come back with Katie Meyer. Let's take a look at the highlights of Hurricanes and Duke, brought to you by U Health Sports Medicine. We'll get you back in the game.
Happy to welcome you back to Hurricane Game Day. Joe Zagacki alongside Katie Meyer. Brought to you by Williamson Automotive. All right, you've got uh, Florida State and Clemson coming up. But a quick look back. You battled with uh, Notre Dame. That was mm -hmm. a hard-fought battle. And then you went into the fourth quarter with Wake Forest. Unfortunately, they had a fourth quarter against you the same way they did against Pittsburgh. Yeah. Wake is um, a veteran team. I, I had them picked in the top five in our conference this year. Um, just knowing their talent, uh, they got a couple really strong uh, smart international players and and some great upperclassmen. They've played a ton of minutes together. It's their third season together. Uh, basically everybody, they return. So, you know, when it came down to the uh, making the right decisions in the fourth quarter, they just, they, they outfought us, but they also out-executed us. They really did. And, um, you know, that... It, that's, that's the ACC. It's going to come down to two or three possessions in the fourth quarter, and, and we turned it over, and, and they got offensive rebounds when we did get stops, so we lost. And that's, it's going to be that way every night if we don't fix our turnover issues and we don't grab the defensive rebounds when we need them. And the Notre Dame game, you went up there and played them eyeball to eyeball. Yeah, that was probably the best um, we've been in tune. You know, I, I, that was the most connected, the staff, the players, the game plan, the, everybody doing their roles. And so that was what was a shame because that, that Notre Dame game was as great of a 40 minutes of basketball we've been. I, I didn't even know that we'd be able to be that team. Um, but we still lost. So you should have an edge coming off a loss. And I think we rested a little bit and um, got a little complacent and stopped doing the little things that got us in the position to beat Duke and got us in the position to almost beat Notre Dame. Now you mentioned being connected against Notre Dame. And as much as we talk about, both on the men's side and the women's side in conference play, how important home court advantage is, mm -hmm. especially for the University of Miami. Right. It's interesting to me that when the Hurricanes go on the road to some of these venues, yeah. I think the players really do look forward to it. And there right. is a, a real bonding or connection. Yeah, I mean, I love playing at home, but there are, they, there are certain uh, attitudes that pop up when we're when on the road. It's us against them kind of mentality, a little less pressure, a lot more. We, we tend to attack a little bit harder. Um, that's, I think, the thing that Notre Dame's coach said about us after the game is how fearless we play. And then we came back at home and played with hesitation and with fear because our pace just dropped a little bit. So there's, you know, it's a fine line. It's a fine line of when you have your team, you have them all on the same page, or you have one person that's just a little bit slower or the two extra dribbles, and then everything gets disconnected, and that's what happened, and we got to get that connection back. You go on the road, speaking of going on the road, Florida State and Clemson, back-to-back -back road trips coming up. Right. Uh, yeah, the start of the conference was not kind to us. I mean, we, we had the top teams early, and then we're on the road three out of four here. So, uh, But, you know, it's all about who you play, where you play them, and when you play them. And right now, uh, maybe we need a couple road games. You know, Florida State's as, as good as any team in the country. They're not just one of the top teams in a the conference. They're, they're, they're traditionally and have been – they've done such a great job. Um, you know, we've been beating them in the conference tournament, so they're angry about that. <laughs> so we're walking into an absolute hornet's nest, and uh, we better have our toughness with us. We better pack that in our suitcases, that's for sure. Uh, Coach L's going to join us in a minute or two, and we're both going to Clemson this weekend as yeah, well. <laughs> that's funny. Wish we could get it there early enough to see the game, but we're just missing it by a little bit. But you're, you're going to have uh, Clemson coming up, and that, that's always a tough challenge to go up there and play. It is very difficult. Um, it, we, we, I hope that they have a, a large crowd because, you know, sometimes it gets a little flat and, and we play a little flat there. Um, it's one of my least favorite places to play in terms of a road game, so we better bring our own energy. All right, very good. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right, that's University of Miami head coach Katie Meyer. When we come back, we'll be joined by Hurricanes head coach Jim Laranega as we continue right here on Hurricane Game Day. Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to Hurricanes Game Day, brought to you by Williamson Automotive. Joseph Gacki alongside University of Miami head coach Jim Laranega as we are in the middle, or the beginning, I should say, of the ACC basketball season. And Canes are off to a great start, 2-1, and one, and coming off a tremendous victory. Most recent game against Florida State, coach, that was a lot of fun. Packed house, uh, Joe. Uh, the first home game in over a month. We played six games away from the Watsco Center. It was very nice to get back home and have our fans cheering for us. And our players really delivered. 80-75 over the Seminoles. We have a lot of different things we can talk about here during the course of the show. But let's uh, stay with Florida State for a moment. Because they came in averaging over 80 points a game. Top 30 offense, top 25 defense. And early in the game, you were shooting 92%. <laughs> <laughs> we had a great first half, scored 45 points. 
The, the offense was very well balanced. The defense was very tough. We led by 13 at, at halftime. I, I think uh, the fans were treated to a very entertaining game, especially when Chris Likes entered the court and put on a show. He sure did. Uh, 18 points for Chris Likes with an array of acrobatic, dazzling moves. Maybe you can address that for a moment because he, uh, does that uh, justify him being able to play against these big guys? The irony was they had a player 7-4 and you had a player 5-7. <laughs> you know, um, one of the things is we had three players who played outstanding basketball at the offensive end. Uh, Bruce Brown scored 23 points, had his season high. Uh, we had Dewan Yule score 20 and they both rebounded the ball very well. And then Chris Likes came in off the bench at a time when the game was kind of in the balance in the first half. It was very close. And then we shot ahead and, and ended up leading by uh, 13 at halftime. That, that's what you need against a team like Florida State that's so good at both ends of the court. It's much better to be playing from out in front than from behind. It looked like early in the game, they were coming out and attacking whoever your ball handler was, double teaming them out, pushing, trying to push you out, and you really punished them. Your ball handlers did punish them by getting the ball inside for easy dunks. Well, what happened is, is their pressure comes at us. Our, our theory is go right by them. Mm -hmm. Jaquan Newton had four assists in the first, like, ten minutes of the game, a beautiful alley-oop lob uh, to Lonnie Walker, who got his second start of the season and I thought did very, very well. And then Jaquan got inside and, and gave uh, Dewan Ewell a dunk. And uh, then Chris Likes came in and got uh, Abuka Zundu a dunk. So we were really attacking them. I, I think we had like 26 uh, points in the paint in the first half of our 45. All right, we have much more to talk about with University of Miami head coach Jim Laranega. The Canes are in ACC play. Let's take a look back at the highlights of uh, Miami and Florida State brought to you by UL Sports Medicine. We'll get you back in the game. These are the games you live for. This is what you prepare for. This is why you play at this level. Two top 25 teams going at each other. We need to play at our A gate. Go at these guys. Let's go. One, two, three, go. Yeah. Happy to welcome you back to Hurricanes Game Day. Joe Zagacki with University of Miami head coach Jim Laranega. Brought to you by Williamson Automotive, Hurricanes basketball inside ACC play. Before we jump ahead to the upcoming games, and you got a couple of big ones with Clemson and Duke, let's uh, go back a little bit because we, we traveled about 15,000 miles. Over 15,000. <laughs> it was Pittsburgh, Hawaii, Minnesota, George Washington. You had quite an experience with your team during the month of December. We did. We started uh, by bringing the team to Washington, D.C., so Chris Likes and his family could see him up close and personal. And George Washington is in the Atlantic 10, a very strong conference, and uh, I mean, we knew that would be a, a tough matchup for us, and it was. Uh, but we were able to come away with a hard-fought victory and, and then take a little bit of a break in a sense that we didn't have a game for a few days 
But we had to come back home here and prepare uh, for our trip to Honolulu. And we played in the Diamond Head Classic, uh, an event sponsored by ESPN. And uh, we flew out to Honolulu. And, and Joe, you were there. 19 hours yeah. was the trip. It's further than Europe. <laughs> it's like going to Australia or Tokyo. Uh, and and um, we got there. I know from a personal uh, uh, point of view, I was exhausted. And then we played a terrific game uh, on uh, Friday night. Uh, was it Friday night? Yeah, yeah Friday night well, against depends Hawaii. depends on where you were. <laughs> the, the hometown team. And then we had to turn around and play immediately the next day which was still the same day because it was so late in the morning or, you know, early in the morning, 1 a.m. here, and then like 5 p.m., 10 p.m. Uh, the next day. Anyway, what I, my point was we were exhausted, and we didn't play with any kind of energy or real juice and fell to a very fine New Mexico mm -hmm. State team, not taking anything away from them. Uh, but we gave the, the kids Sunday off. I said, rest up because we can't play the, the, with that lack of energy. And then the next day we played Middle Tennessee, a team that's been to the NCAA tournament the last several years, and not only is gone, but they've won a game each year. And that was a battle, and we were uh, fortunately able to, to win that ball game. You have Clemson coming up and then Duke, so two very big games. Let's talk about the Tigers first on the road. Uh, tough place to go, and they're playing really well. They're through 3 and 0 in conference play, sitting in first place. Yeah. They've only lost one game all season <laughs> on the road to, to Temple. And uh, Brad Brownell has one of the unique teams in the ACC. Starts four seniors and a junior. Wow. Uh, everybody's got freshmen. He's got upperclassmen, and that's, that's normally a good formula for success. Yeah. They're a very smart, intelligent, experienced, skilled, athletic team. And then there's uh, really no time in a turnaround. It's a flyback from Clemson. Uh, on a Saturday night, and then quick turnaround, Duke is here on Monday night. Yeah, big Monday. Uh, you know, it, that's one of the, the games that's uh, basically built for television. And we need to have a, a quick turnaround and be ready to, to go. Uh, school is also starting that week, mm -hmm. uh, next week, so our guys will be back in classes. And uh, it's a real challenge. Uh, Duke was preseason number one. Uh, they were, I think, number two this weekend, but lost uh, to NC State. They're actually one and two as of this conversation, uh, but they've got a couple of games before us, so who knows? They could come in rolling. Yeah, well, it's going to be a lot of fun. Always is during the course of the ACC. Coach, thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. All right, that's University of Miami head coach Jim Laranega. And for Coach Laranega, I'm Joe Zagacki. We'll see you next time right here on Hurricanes Game Day. So long, everyone.